13-year-old daughter go outside and play with a 54-year-old stranger. But here's the problem. When our kids are on their computers, do we really know who they're playing with? 54-year-old John Phillips is accused of having sex with a 13-year-old girl he met playing a game online. Investigators, they say they met while playing an online game called RuneScape and even got married in this virtual world. But this guy clearly wanted some real-life action. Police say he drove from Massachusetts all the way to Michigan to give the girl a cell phone and, of course, to have sex with her three different times. Now, their secret unfolded when the girl's mom caught her texting Phillips at 2 o'clock in the morning. Joining me tonight, John Phillips attorney, Joseph Niskar, digital lifestyle expert Mario Armstrong, HLN law enforcement analyst Mike Brooks back with us. Uh, Mario, I want to start with you because I, I just want to kind of set the, 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 the world here, this cyber world where people are meeting. Because I'm concerned about kids out there playing with people. They don't know who they're playing with. And I don't think parents understand how this all works. A game like RuneScape, uh, how does it work? I mean, how is it that a 13-year-old can end up getting involved with someone who's uh, 54 years old? Yeah, the, the reason why, Vinny, is because these worlds, uh, these games that a lot of these kids and adults, for that matter, are playing are virtual worlds. They are fictional spaces. So it's easy for you to take on an avatar, which is a, a, a different type of personality. You get to choose a player that meets some type of personality. In the sense of RuneScape, you could be a warrior. You could be a farmer. You could be a... a uh, a priest. You could be several different types of people. You could be a male or a female, and one would never know what the true identity of that person is now, because uh, Mario. Sign up page, here's a question sign up for you: How do they communicate? Is, is all the communication done just by typing in uh, messages to each other, or are people using uh, voices? How exactly does that work? The communication. Yeah, so, so the communication, in-game communication, is done via chat. So you're absolutely right. You can have public chat, and you can have private chat. So you can minimize exactly, you can talk player to player and no one else would know. All right, Joseph Niskar, I gotta ask you, first of all, was your client playing this game and starting some sort of online relationship and a cyber marriage with a 13 year old girl? Absolutely, um, you know, there's nothing wrong and nothing illegal about uh, two people, whatever their ages are, playing this game online. And the fact that they met online uh, and their avatars hooked up at some point during the game. Uh, at that point, no one knew how old each other was, and for the most part, that's what happens on these games, is that there is a, a world of fantasy out there where you can take on another persona, another personality, and live your life through this avatar without knowing who you're actually dealing with on the other end. All right, you said the words hooked up. Mario, i got to go back to you on this. Hooked mm -hmm. up, what does that mean, You two avatars hook up? I mean... Are, are there avatars that disrobe and engage in, in sexual acts? Is that part of this cyber world? Well, it's absolutely part of this cyber world. I mean, th this, is, this is why this can get to the level of wh what really bleeds the line of reality versus fiction. Because in these games, you can take it to, the, in certain games, you can take it to those types of extremes where people that aren't old enough to be able to process exactly what's happening in terms of a relationship are getting themselves into things well beyond maybe where they expected things to go. Uh, Joseph Nisko, I'm going to ask you the follow-up question now, okay? You can see that there's an online relationship, a cyber marriage. Was that marriage uh, consummated in real life? No. Uh, there is an allegation being made, obviously, because Mr. Phillips finds himself charged here in the state of Michigan with some very serious felony charges. But aside from that, uh, there is no evidence whatsoever outside of her word uh, that anything else happened. There is no physical evidence. Uh, there is nothing else How about else the to phone and the text messages, Joseph? Do they exist? Uh, there, are there, are, there are text messages back and forth between the two of them. Uh, but aside from that, and then again, I mean, that is, again, part of the whole fantasy that these two people uh, had with each other. And their relationship was built strictly on fantasy. And it wasn't until uh, they did meet uh, that he realized who she actually was, and at that point, everything was off at that point. But aside from her okay. word, there is no All right, we got evidence. your side of the story, and that's, I'm glad you came on tonight. Right, Mike Brooks, investigating and prosecuting this case. How are you going to prove it? 
Okay, did he buy the phone? Did he actually try unsuccessfully at one time to mail her a particular phone? That's pretty easy to find out. Uh, also, the phone that she had that her mother dis uh, discovered because apparently her mother worked a lot of different hours and couldn't keep a good eye on her. She saw her with this phone at 2 a.m. Okay, where's the number? How did she get the phone? Did it come from him when he drove there? I would say that would, you know, that's going to be pretty easy to prove also. Let's go to Connie, who's in South Carolina tonight. Connie, your thoughts. Hi, Vinny. How you doing? Excellent. Great. I just want to. I just want to say that there is an empty prison sitting in where they were going to send the detainees that would give the people of that state jobs and put all of these pedophiles in that prison and let them grow their own food, fend for themselves, and molest themselves instead of our children. I have a 10-year-old daughter I do not even allow to go outside and play unless she is supervised. Here's the other not part of that, Connie. The these line. days, we've got to watch where they're playing online because right. they create these avatars, and maybe your 10-year-old, your 13-year-old your creates an avatar that... that you know, maybe looks grown up. Here's the question I have for you, Joseph, though. If, in fact, she's got the cell phone that mom didn't get her and he delivered it to her, she's still having text messages back and forth. I mean, if, in fact, he delivers the cell phone and then realizes she's 13, I mean, that's got to be the end of it, right? No more contact? No more cyber marriage? Right. No, but, I mean, what does that mean? The fact that he may have sent her a text, a, a cell phone, may have had communications with her, he's charged, and the most serious charge is that he had sex with this girl and had some inappropriate sexual contact. The fact that he spoke with her over a cell phone and may have sent her a cell phone is then a leap of faith uh, without any evidence at all, and I, I therefore, am going to argue that there is more than reasonable doubt that no sexual contact took place between the two of them. So aside from the cell phones, and again, Again, there are no text messages that corroborate any sexual contact at all. All of it and any It's going to be her word. Okay. Fantasy. Joseph, uh, I appreciate you word. coming on here. All right, before we go, let's take a listen to what uh, police had to say. I give her a lot of credit. Uh, she was a very intelligent young girl, uh, very good with detail, and that helped our investigation tremendously.